Larissa Huff from the J.D. Lohr School of Woodworking here to talk to you about our tapering jig featured in the April-May issue of Woodcraft Magazine. I'll go over its components and why it's our go-to jig for tapering all of our needs both in class and in our furniture making. But first let's talk about where this guy came from. In the beginning there was a commercial, commercially made jig purchase. Um, this guy has a wing nut, it's adjustable so you can set it for whatever tapering angle you need. However, without a clamping device and the fact that it's made out of flimsy metal, running it through the table saw is not our safest and best option. Then came our wooden iteration of the same idea. You can unscrew this fencing system here to adjust your tapering angle to whatever you need. But at the top, there is a clamping device that you can tighten with a screwdriver and loosen the same way. And that way, your leg is being held nice and stable as you run it through the table saw and there's no risk of movement mid-cut. It's a little bit safer. Still a little bit annoying to screw and unscrew this, this clamp every time, so why not improve on that? Next was a wedging clamp version. This guy has a built-in push stick, has a nice straight edge for running it through the table saw, and in this case you can load your leg in and use the wedges as your clamping device to make for easy removal and twisting and turning in between cuts. And after this wedge version came the version that you see today. All right, now let's talk about some of the components here in this tapering jig. The first being this toggle clamp. The toggle clamp is mounted a little bit above the base of the jig here and the clamp itself is adjustable. You can adjust the bolts in here and move this pad up and down. You can adjust the tension on the inside and this really allows for you to clamp any thickness of leg that you might be tapering. It also holds your leg extremely stable so it won't move or rock around during your cut. Another element we have here in the jig's versatility is the fencing system. So the fence itself is just made out of some plywood and these star knobs here loosen and allow for you to shift to whatever angle you need to cut. We'll do the layout on the leg itself and use that as a reference and when we decide where this fence needs to be to achieve the cut, just tighten them up and you're good to go. Next, we have this carriage bolt here that's mounted to a stop block at the end of the jig. The carriage bolt, as you can see, has collected some dust underneath it. That is by design so that you can register the bottom of the leg here without any dust getting captured in between and changing the position of the leg itself. All right, another feature on this jig is this rail that's mounted along the right outside edge of the jig itself and this fence-mounted bracket. The bracket has a little channel created between the table saw fence and the edge of the bracket itself that captures this rail and guides the jig nice and straight through the cut. As you're cutting the taper, you're cutting on an angle which is a lot of pressure against the jig and if you don't have something holding it tight up against the fence, it has a tendency to kind of walk away from that table saw fence as you're making your cut. So this bracket allows for a nice straight smooth cut. Typically in shaker style furniture when you see a tapered leg you'll notice that the tapers are only on the inside faces of the leg also where you'll find your mortises. The outside faces are left square so it adds a nice tapering detail without being too nervous and being tapered on all sides. So when you're laying out for a taper a few things that you have to consider is where your skirt board falls with relation to the top of your leg and how large or small you want the foot of the leg to be. So my first stage in laying out is to put my skirt board in place here so it's flush with the top of my leg. And then I need to decide how far down the leg from there I want my taper to begin. Usually after I taper a leg at the table saw I'll take it to the joiner to clean it up and that actually changes the depth or the height of my taper. So I want to leave a lot of space down here so I don't accidentally run up into where my skirt board meets my leg and leave a gap in there. So I'll measure three inches down from where my skirt board begins. 
Now I'm dealing with a one and three quarter inch leg. Uh, I find that a one and a quarter inch foot here on the leg makes for a nice taper over this length. However, how big or small you want the foot of your leg is completely up to you. So I'm going to lay out for one and a quarter here at the bottom. And carry that over onto the end grain here. And now I can use a long straight edge and connect my one and a quarter mark here at the bottom with the top of my taper up here and draw a nice clear pencil mark. So if I loosen my star knobs here and align my top layout line with the edge of the jig, push my fence flush and tighten it up there. And down here I'm looking at my end grain layout line and aligning it with the edge of my jig. Tighten that knob up there. Clamp her in place and we're ready to go. Now when you load your leg into this jig before you make your first cut, you want to pay attention to how the leg is oriented. For your first cut, you want one mortise out to the left and one down towards the table. And that ensures for your second cut, when you rotate the leg one turn to the right, you still have a nice flat face on the bottom to clamp down to and hold it steady during your cut. So one mortise down and one out to the left. Lock my toggle clamp in. Your leg shouldn't be able to move around at all. And I've set my table saw fence here to just a 32nd of an inch wider than the jig itself. So that way I'm cutting almost flush along this edge and thus perfectly in line with my layout. I have a rip blade here in the table saw that reduces the likelihood of burning over such a wide angled cut. Um, and I have my bracket mounted to my table saw fence to ensure a nice straight safe cut. <laughs> at the table saw, you may notice some machine marks left over from the rip blade. I like to take the leg over to the joiner to clean up those marks before I go to sanding. I'll use some push blocks and joint the tapered faces of my leg, being sure to favor the tapered end as opposed to the mortise. Plans for this tapering jig can be found in the article. It's easy to make, easy to use, and will meet all of your tapering needs. With a simple hole drilled into the top and a hook and eye, it's easy for storage as well.